Glucagon-like peptide, one, is an incretin hormone. That means it is secreted after eating the food, and it stimulates the insulin secretion in a glucose-dependent manner. GLP-1 plays an important role in regulating the blood glucose levels and controlling your appetite and digestion. GLP-1 receptor agonists are one group of drugs that are useful in the treatment of type 2 diabetes and in the treatment of obesity. GLP-1 receptor agonists can be classified into two categories based on their duration of action. Few of the drugs are short-acting, and they have a half-life of a few hours. However, few drugs are very long-acting, with half-lives above 24 hours. GLP-1 receptor agonists can end with two types of suffixes. They can be identified by the suffix either natide or glutide. The drugs that are ending with the natide include the exenatide and lixicinatide. Both are short-acting GLP-1 receptor agonists. On the other hand, the long-acting GLP-1 agonists are ending with the suffix glutide, like liraglutide, diliglutide, and semaglutide. Short-acting agents mainly affect the postprandial glucose. Therefore, when you're going to take the meal, the elevation of the glucose levels can be controlled by short-acting medications. On the other hand, long-acting agonists can reduce both fasting and postprandial glucose levels. They can also reduce the cardiovascular risk, and they can better control the glucose levels in your body. Normally, GLP-1 is secreted by L cells of the small intestine, particularly at the distal ileum and colon. However, its secretion is stimulated in response to food intake, particularly carbohydrates and fats. However, the action of GLP-1 is limited by its degradation. It is rapidly degraded by enzyme dipeptidyl peptidase 4, commonly known as DPP-4. This degradation occurs within minutes after secretion, leading to a short half-life for this natural hormone. This limits its physiological actions, and it can show its action only for about two minutes. On the other hand, GLP-1 agonists can remain in your blood for a longer time. They work better and for more time than the GLP-1 in your body. Actions of GLP-1 agonists GLP-1 agonists mainly increase the glucose-dependent insulin secretion. They stimulate the beta cells on the pancreas. Therefore, they release the insulin when the blood glucose levels are elevated. One of the important actions of GLP-1 agonists is that they act in response to the blood glucose levels. They stimulate the insulin secretion from the beta cells on the pancreas. Therefore, GLP-1 agonists have less risk of inducing hypoglycemia, and in people with low blood glucose levels, they do not promote insulin secretion. Therefore, the risk of hypoglycemia is less associated with GLP-1 agonists. GLP-1 agonists also suppress the glucagon secretion from the alpha cells. Glucagon plays an important role in raising the blood glucose levels. It promotes hepatic glucose production. GLP-1 receptor agonists also control the glucose levels by inhibiting glucagon release. Particularly, GLP-1 reduces the glucose levels and suppresses the glucagon secretion when the glucose levels are high in the blood. GLP-1 agonists can reduce gastric emptying. They can delay the movement of food from the stomach to the small intestine. The small intestine is a larger area that is responsible for the absorption of food compared with the stomach. Since this movement is slowed, it results in the slower absorption of glucose in the small intestine. This results in fewer glucose spikes after the meal, so they can lower postprandial glucose levels. GLP-1 agonists also act in another way. They promote satiety and reduce the appetite. However, this action is mediated through their action on your brain. They act on the hypothalamic centers and induce a feeling of fullness in the stomach. This reduces the appetite and reduces the food intake. This can also help in controlling calories supplied to your body, leading to weight control. GLP-1 receptor agonists can improve cardiac function. They can also reduce the blood pressure and reduce inflammation in the body. One of their main actions is to reduce plaque formation, and they can decrease the risk of atherosclerosis. All this can improve the cardiac function and reduce the risk of stroke and myocardial infarction. GLP-1 agonists also have a protective action on the neurons in the brain. GLP-1 receptors are also located in the brain, and they are also responsible for a few of the signaling in the brain. Even though evidence is not completely clear, GLP-1 plays an important role in neuroprotection. Now let us discuss the clinical uses of GLP-1 agonists. One of the main uses of GLP-1 agonists is in the treatment of diabetes mellitus. They are used in type 2 diabetes mellitus, and they can be used either alone or in combination with other anti-diabetic agents. 
Normally, in diabetic people, incretin hormone secretion may be impaired. This reduces the control on glucose levels, especially after the meal. GLP-1 agonists can improve the action of incretin hormones, thereby controlling postprandial glucose. They're also useful to produce a weight loss in people with diabetes, coexisting with being overweight. The second clinical use is in the treatment of obesity and weight management. GLP-1 also plays an important role in promoting satiety and delaying gastric emptying. Therefore, GLP-1 agonists can be used to control body weight. Medications like liraglutide and semaglutide are approved for weight loss even in people without diabetes. Liraglutide is well known by its brand name Saxenda and semaglutide is Wegovy. The third use is to reduce cardiovascular complications. Few of the GLP-1 agonists, like liraglutide, semaglutide, and diliglutide, can reduce cardiovascular complications. They can minimize the major adverse cardiovascular events that are commonly called MACE. Generally, diabetes is associated with heart disease, which may increase the risk of cardiovascular complications. As an off-label, GLP-1 agonists are used in the treatment of polycystic ovarian syndrome. This is because of their potential to improve metabolic health and reduce weight, which increases the possibility of successful fertility. In the people with diabetes and obesity, GLP-1 agonists can stimulate the insulin release and improve the glucose control. In women with PCOS, insulin sensitivity may be impaired, which results in the loss of glucose control. The development of insulin resistance can also increase the risk of overweight. GLP-1 agonists can improve ovulation and menstrual regularity. This increases the fertility in the women. They may also reduce the excessive androgens in the woman. Few of the GLP-1 agonists were also found to control cholesterol levels in women with GOS. They can also be combined with metformin for better efficacy. Another use of GLP-1 agonists is in non-alcoholic steatohepatitis. This is called NASH. It is one of the severe forms of fatty liver disease. Excessive body weight is one of the significant factors that affect your liver health. GLP-1 agonists can help reduce weight loss and reduce liver fat, improving the symptoms of fatty liver. Medications like liraglutide, semaglutide, and terzepatide can improve liver functionality and reduce inflammation. Even they can reduce the liver fibrosis. How they act. GLP-1 agonists act just like the natural and cretin hormones. However, they are more stable and long-acting compared with the natural hormones. Incretin hormones are of two types, GLP-1 and GIP. GLP-1 is naturally secreted in the intestine by L cells in response to food intake. It plays an important role in the glucose metabolism. GLP agonists can bind to the GLP-1 receptors. They can increase glucose-dependent insulin secretion. Here we are using the term glucose-dependent. That means the insulin secretion is promoted whenever your glucose levels are very high. In the case of normal glucose levels, they are not promoting the insulin secretion. This glucose-dependent action results in controlling the glucose levels efficiently. It also reduces the risk of inducing hypoglycemia when your glucose levels are normal. Normally, when you take the insulins externally, they can reduce the glucose levels. Their action is not dependent on the glucose levels in your body. Therefore, whether your glucose levels are excessive or normal, they can continue their action to reduce the glucose levels. So in people, sometimes insulin can produce low glucose levels, leading to hypoglycemia. This hypoglycemia is highly disadvantageous in diabetic people, as it may produce confusion, sweating, shakiness, hunger, and rapid heartbeats. Significant hypoglycemia is fatal to the people. Similarly, sulfonylureas can also induce hypoglycemia. Medications like glipizide, gliburide, and glimpiride are a few examples in this category. They promote the insulin secretion from the beta cells by directly activating the sulfonylurea receptors on the pancreas. Therefore, their action does not depend on the glucose levels, and they are linked with inducing hypoglycemia. On the other hand, GLP-1 agonists have less risk of lowering your glucose levels below normal. However, when they are combined with insulin or sulfonylureas, the risk of hypoglycemia may be increased. Now, what are the side effects of these medications? Few of the gastrointestinal side effects are common with GLP-1 agonists. They can produce nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, and constipation. When they are given by injection, they produce injection site reactions. Rarely, 
they can produce a few of the serious side effects like pancreatitis, which results in the inflammation of the pancreas. A few of the medications may also be associated with the formation of gallstones. In people with dehydration, GLP-1 agonists can produce kidney injury. Very rarely, this category of drugs is associated with medullary thyroid carcinoma. Since GLP-1 agonists reduce the gastric motility in people with gastroparesis, they should be used carefully. In renal impairment, the dose of GLP-1 agonist may be reduced. That's all about GLP-1 agonists, their actions, uses, and side effects. Please subscribe and hit the like button if you really like this video. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.